Hello, everybody. My name is Scatter. Welcome back to Divine Journey 2. Uh, you know, when I was doing some prep for this episode, you know, I realized, you know, the rest of this playthrough is just kind of going to be, you know, making infrastructure, auto crafting everything we need for it, building everything, placing all the blocks and putting them down and then moving on to the next thing. And I just wanted to say how excited I am for that. It's uh, it feels really freeing to have auto crafting uh, now and it feels like a lot of tedium is going to be put to rest with it. So I'm very excited for things to come. Hopefully the progress speeds up just a little bit. Um, but just to show this setup that I built in between episodes here. So this is uh, inscriber. So along the left side, these are all the presses, right? And they just kind of take in everything and then they go directly into their kind of second bit where they actually make the processors. Now, this is, so I do power with conduit so I don't have to take up an extra side for it because I actually do need four sides. So if I wanted to use power with not a conduit or signal and plated item duct, I guess, but fuck that, um, I would have to spread them out a little bit to get access to more sides. But this way it works. They are rotated uh, a little bit strangely. You can see there's like the front of them and then the tops are actually facing left. So the top comes in there and then I have these two down here making silicon all the time. And if they need, uh, if I need more silicon faster, I could just make more inscribers and add them there. Uh, but yeah, and then everything, I just have uh, an export bus underground here to keep it clean with the silicon and redstone, which are the things I'm always going to need for this. And then just one interface, uh, putting everything in a chest. And then that's, uh, these are all filtered on the proper thing. I, uh, I didn't realize before doing this, that this last press it actually makes two different uh, circuits, Thaumium and uh, Draconium, the scheduling circuit. So it'll be a while before we get to that, but it's interesting. Uh, I shouldn't need a second inscriber set for it, but I mean, if I do, I can just add to the stack, which is just fantastic. Uh, I finished making four of these crafting units, uh, which should be fine for now, but I, again, I can always add more if need be. Um, and as far as that goes, uh, I, I didn't really do much else. So I barely did anything with this setup. I just added some conduits to the back. So I have item conduits, which are going to be going into most of these with the proper items, um, energy, of course, and then the redstone, which we talked about last time to control them all. So uh, uh, what we're also going to need is an energy trash can, which is just a thing that exists. And you can just use it to void all the energy, uh, which I'm going to do I think for now I'm going to avoid the energy from the rainbow generator too, which like sucks because it's 25 million per tick, but like we just don't need power right now at all. And I feel like it would be like, I could go ahead and make like a huge induction matrix, but that takes like one of these induction cells takes, uh, I believe 2000 os uh, osmium. No. Yeah. Well, 2000 Osco glass. So even more osmium than that. And it's just, like, it's not like it's a scarce resource or anything, but it's just not worth it. Like, we're we're running a power surplus, and we have been for a long time. Like, by the time we need more power, yeah, we can turn back on the rainbow generator and actually make use of it. But for now, I think it is just going to be voided, unfortunately. Um, so, it's a little bit sad. But there is that. So, there is another little bit of prep that I have to do for the generators because... We're going to need lava to run the generators, some of them at least. So we're going to need a lot more than we currently have. And this is something that I mentioned last time, I think, that I've been putting off for a really long time, but no longer, uh, mostly because I don't have a choice anymore. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. So I've already done kind of the preliminary setup here. And I just need to get the thing set up here. Now, th these mechanism pumps are amazing. They basically... Um, they like just suck up all of this lava. Like it's a huge radius they have. Um, I'd probably do better to set it up like over there somewhere, but I can move it if, uh, if need be in the future. But so I have that there and I'm going to have that go into um, a ME system. Now, of course I forgot the uh, fluid import bus. So I'll go grab one of those. Okay, seriously thought I had everything that time, but I guess not. So this says no fluid. Now, I wonder how exactly that works, because I know once it starts digging fluid, it, like, 
can can get stuff from outside of its radius but maybe to start it has to be directly over lava so let's try that please don't fall in the lava thank you uh, let's try that so this is directly over some like a source block of lava so this should work if this doesn't work then i don't know what will and it's it's fire resistant of course yep there we go it's working okay and then we just need the emmy system set up and there we go that should be a wonderful way to get uh, as much lava as we need for the future so i just have this emmy chest here it already has 40 buckets granted some of those were in this tank beforehand but uh you know most of them weren't so this is looking good uh this is chunk loaded and that's all fine so yeah i guess i'll just let that run for a bit while we get the uh the rest of the generator stuff set up and then once this has had a chance to get some lava then we can slot that in and hopefully get some rainbow stuff going so for the generators as a reminder all of these need to be active at the same time in order for the rainbow generator to to produce power uh and i figured i would do you know my my classic of just having an export bus and a drawer controller and putting everything i need in these drawers um and so what am I going to use to run these? So everything that you can do with them is in JEI except for the survival and furnace generator for some reason. But I believe both of these are just whatever a furnace can take as fuel these can take to generate. Certainly true for the furnace. Not 100% sure about survival, but I am kind of sure. And what I'm going to use to run both of those is uh, blocks of coal. So what I want to do here, because I don't care about the power that comes from these, what I want to do is maximize the time that it takes for these things to, to do because I'm imagining that my bottleneck is going to be how fast I can actually pump these items into here. So the more I can maximize time spent processing your input, the better. Okay. So coal blocks for those two. Right. And I will just go ahead and lock all these drawers before I forget and it becomes a mess could have just clicked on there that's fine and then i'll do that on there as well uh your culinary generator i think i'm gonna have that be apples i'm going to switch this farm up here to farm oak wood uh so that i can get apples renewably i do have a couple hundred in storage so i think it'll be fine for now but apples uh, and then most of them most of them are pretty straightforward um, the, there's a few I want to kind of talk about. First of all, the slimy generator, you need a slime ball and for some reason a bucket of milk, uh, which you think like, oh, that's fine. I already have a pen of cows. Uh, eagle eyed viewers will have noticed that my cows have gotten out. And based on this missing fence, you would assume that, uh, I, I did something stupid or I let him out on purpose. Uh, but no, I did not at least deliberately, um, remove this fence. My working theory is that the cows figured out how to do it and, I don't know where they went, so I don't know if that's like a, a save file corruption or what, but I only noticed it after I like kind of the game crashed and I re-entered into it, so I really have no idea, but the cows completely disappeared and the fence is broken, so I'll, I'm, I guess I'm going to have to bring some back. I don't know. I, I have a few buckets of milk from the few cows that were left over from my old base, but um, yeah, to get that like super renewably like animal rancher, I think, from foregoing is going to be one of the only ways right now but we'll see if we need that set up like each bucket of milk lasts 24 seconds so maybe i can swing not being able to do that the disenchantment generator is an interesting one um it does just take enchanted books and the better the enchantment the longer they take so uh that's probably something i can just craft up a few of them like the better enchantments go up to like 10 minutes and i think that's probably fine um, halitosis generator, the dragon's breath does last 10 minutes, which is amazing. Um, so I'm kind of, I'm going to kind of use that as a baseline, right? Cause the dragon's breath are pretty, uh, hard to come by. So if I can run them all in 10 minute chunks, 10 minute intervals, then that would be great. Uh, I've also heard that the rainbow generator only pulls, uh, once every 10 ticks. So you can actually pulse these on and off every 10 ticks and basically get like 10 times the usage out of them. We'll see if I can get that to work, but I don't know. I'm not super confident, but I'll, I'll be conservative with uh, the power or the redstone. 
Um, anyway, everything else I think is kind of straightforward. Uh, potion generator, I'm going to see if I can swing just using water bottles for now. I know I have the potion brewer from foregoing that may be worth setting up, but all of these potions are kind of awful. Like I think the longest one you can do is four seconds, eight seconds maybe. I don't see anything. Oh, 16 seconds, I guess. That's not bad, but then how? Yeah, dragon's breath. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's really going to be worth it to use the dragon's breath on. Uh, the overclock generator is another one I'm worried about. I'm pretty sure its gimmick is just use the item up as fast as possible, which, uh, I you know, again, the conduits the conduits are great, but uh, they they do have... They do lack in speed a little bit, so I'll probably have to get some speed upgrades in for specifically the overclock generator, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I will again use blocks of coal for that. Hopefully it'll last longer. If not, then I'll switch out to using birch planks. Um, and then, you know, again, some of these really uh, fuck you up, like the nether star generator, I think. The death generator you don't want to go near ever. Uh, hopefully the radius on that is kind of small. I'm going to encase these in, like, glass or something. So I can see what's going on, but hopefully I'm in like as little danger as possible. And I want to get a, a good backlog of stone burnt so that I can make as many rainbow, rainbow blocks as I possibly can while this is running. The only bit of infrastructure that I would like to get set up uh, before we jump into this is a nether star farm. Um, so I will get on that. Apparently the wither can still break obsidian blocks. Uh, even in claimed chunks, which kind of sucks. Uh, thankfully, I didn't learn that the hard way, though. But this reinforced obsidian block doesn't seem too, too hard to make. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and teach the system to make it so I can get a bunch. Another thing we need to automate the nether stars is the... Well, I guess we don't technically need it. I don't, maybe? Do we? Is there a way to do this without it? I don't know. But the, this makes it a whole lot easier anyway. There's a wither builder from industrial foregoings very simple machine you just supply it with power and uh, the items and it just constructs the withered summoning thing for you uh so that's great uh i also so i wanted to show you something this stumped the people on discord and i, I wanted to know if anybody who watches my videos knows what's going on okay it looks like a relog may have fixed it but the other day i was seeing this mob farm Look, no, it is still like it. Look, this is just totally light on the inside. I have no idea why this is happening. Um, it's There's just light in here. The cursed earth won't spread to this. Oh, Jesus, that scared me a lot. Okay, I guess the light problem is fixed because there's stuff spawning in here now. Um, even though it looks light and the cursed earth still won't spread. So I don't get what's going on here. If anybody does, then please let me know. If I go ahead and show the enemy spawning blocks. Maybe this just doesn't work the same way on Cursed Earth, right? But the other day I was in here and it was just showing a big, just the only red X was here. The other ones were not, uh, but it's still very light in here. I'm not sure why. I guess it doesn't matter if things can still spawn, but maybe they're not spawning as fast as they could because they can't use the whole area. Um, I guess mostly the main like problem that's like objectively a problem is that the Cursed Earth won't spread all the way, but the other day, stuff just wasn't spawning in there, and I don't know what's up with that. But uh, in any case, there's no new uh, wither stuff in here, so I'll just leave it once again. Okay, so I'm going to, against my better judgment, build the wither spawner right here. Uh, part of the reason I am doing it is because it's close to the sound muffler that I already have set up for the mob farm, which is cool because I will definitely want to uh, nullify the sounds from this. The Wither Builder is smart because it actually automatically just builds kind of a block offset so that you can put your reinforced whatever whatever block that is protected from the Wither explosions and whatnot uh, in between, and then your, your stuff is safe. And the Mob Crusher has a similar thing going on where you can just have the range extend as much as you want um, inside of the thing from the outside. So you can actually do this in a pretty small area, 3x4x3 three by by three internal. Um, so I don't need very much of that reinforced obsidian at all, and it is pretty cheap at this point. I'm pretty sure I have enough to do it, so I will just go ahead and build this machine. Dead simple. So you can see, even with uh, just a tier 2 range up upgrade or add-on, this does cover the whole interior, uh, except for the very ceiling, 
which I think has to be there anyway, and there's no way for the mob crusher to extend upwards as far as I know. So that should be fine. And I probably don't need to fill in the edges, but I suppose I could uh, if I wanted to make some more of this stuff. I'll just leave it for now because I want to test this out for the first time. And there we go. So the wither is spawning as we know. And I will take this opportunity to blacklist some stuff. Probably could just search wither and do everything. So there we go. The mob crusher has killed it and we got our first kind of automated, not technically all the way, but kind of automated, uh, nether star. And now all that's left is to hook this stuff up to the ME system, which is honestly a little bit annoying because this cable is completely saturated and this one also is, and I'm not running anything else over here. So we may need to get some underground AE2 stuff going on. Uh, I don't really see a huge way around that right now, but um, fuck it, let's do it. Okay, I just barely didn't have enough fluix to get us across the finish line with that one, but it's all good now. Let's see, can I, uh, is there any dirt? Any dirt around here? There we go. Okay, a little bit cleaner, marginally. Now all we need to do, we want to import from you. And we want to, so just make sure that's working. You are going to get pulled in. I guess a zombie spawned in there, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, but okay. So missing channel. This should come online. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So I don't really care if this picks up some junk. If this, if this acts as like a tiny secondary mob farm along with the wither stuff, that's totally fine with me. Although pretty useless, but fine. Uh, so then we want to do soul sand and wither skulls. Now... Soul sand, I can craft with this, and I do have the recipe in the interface here. You just put sand in front of this. I, I am just going to do that manually, or not like manually, but like I'll just make sure it has enough soul sand because a crafting card, which is what would normally be the right thing here, I'm told is horrible for TPS, like even one crafting card. It's just something you want to avoid at all costs, if at all possible. So I will be doing my best to avoid that. Um, they're never necessary really, so I don't think it's something that, um, is really going to be on the docket for us now or in the future. So just keep that in mind. If you ever think, oh, a crafting card would be super useful for this situation, there's a reason that, uh, I'm not going with that option. And I should have some soul sand in here. Yeah, so it's working. Good. Let's see if we can... Muffle those sounds, wither ambient. And if there is explosions, then we can mute those too. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> wither death, definitely. Wither spawn I saw in here. Oh, well how about we just search wither. Generic explode. Now that's something that I'm, I'm worried about muting, but I mean... See, look, we got all these withers here. Possibly should slow this machine down somehow. Is that maybe a good idea? <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe not going to be necessary. I mean, I'll run out of skulls sometime soon anyway. Oh no. <laughs> well, hopefully this is all fine. Despite the, the errors and whatnot. I, you know what? I'm confident that it is. Maybe I shouldn't be, but I am. The only thing that I'd be worried about is if so many of them spawn in there that they like push each other out of the box. I don't think that's going to happen, although these unknown <laughs> problems are causing me some concern here. Uh, don't think it's going to be a problem, though. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Let's have a look at our spoils. 30, 40 nether stars already. God damn. Okay, well, that's about all of the skeletons we have. We must be running out of skeletons soon here. But anyway, um, 
Yeah, I'd like to mute that sound too. I'll get that. Jesus Christ. That's an awful sound. Wither break block. Oh no. Well, everything looks fine. I guess I just played the sound anyway. So yeah, we've run out of skeleton skulls. And uh, that was a pretty good use of time, I think. So hopefully that mob farm in the nether keeps up doing what it was doing. And we can uh, just stay stay happy and all that good stuff. So 48 nether stars in the nether star generator. They last two minutes each, which is not bad at all. So you really can't complain. So how, many, how much dragon breath do I actually have here? I have four, so that's 40 minutes worth. I'll probably just do those manually and just do them one at a time and just kind of baby everything and make sure that all the generators are running. So in that case, I guess let me uh, let me finish populating these drawers with what needs to be in them and then, then we can really get this thing going. Okay, we're almost ready here to try getting our first rainbow blocks, but one thing I want to make sure of first is that this power is actually going to be voided by this trash can. Now, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be, but the fact that it's just sitting around in here doesn't sit right with me. Uh, but I'm assuming it's just because these are off. Yeah, okay, so they do go ahead and drain out. I was also getting a message here saying um, the grid was overloaded, which I thought was kind of weird, but I guess that was... Uh, I guess that was nothing. And I also, I made a bunch more of these mills. Now, apparently, if you uh, make too much of your grid power using the same type of mill, you get an efficiency loss, which I think is uh, a little bit stupid. I don't know. Like, I don't really see why it has to be that way. Like, I, I get the idea, but in practice, I think it's just kind of weird. Uh, however, oh, yeah, this machine sucks, by the way, because it doesn't spread out this stuff. I'm going to replace it with the uh, thermal one soon as possible uh but in any case um yeah i'm gonna need a bunch of those for making the rainbow blocks as well because that that would be disastrous if i had turned all these on and they were working and they were all running the rainbow generator was running and then i couldn't make the damn rainbow blocks because i didn't have enough gp that would be insane um and awful so i'm gonna definitely try not to do that i'm assuming it's gonna take a really long time for these to be made so with these four speed upgrades it's 320 gp I don't know if I can really afford to put many more in, especially considering how hard it apparently is to get a high amount of GP, but um, I guess we're just going to see how it goes. This is mostly set up now. There are a couple of big hurdles I have to get over, and uh, there's only a couple, so I'll go through them. First of all, I need to find out if the bucket of milk from the slimy generator gets used up or not. Um, the, the milk does, I assume. I have to find out, though, if the bucket does because if it doesn't i will have to pull out the bucket so let's find out so the it does leave the bucket behind it looks like and i guess i'll just let that finish and make sure that the bucket doesn't like magically come out or something but i assume it won't do something like that so i'll need to pull out the buckets and then i guess refill them with milk i don't know where i'm getting all this milk from man like there's no good recipe for milk right what the hell um, okay. All I do is milk. All right. Um, condensed milk. I mean, no, I, I don't think there's anything that I can really do other than just get some cows, maybe get one of those animal ranchers. But I think for the time being, the milk lasts kind of long enough that I don't think it's going to be an issue. I'm just going to pull the buckets out into a trash can though. And that should be fine. So the only other things I have, I still have to get the potion set up. Well, the, the water bottles will say, and I have to figure out what I'm doing with the disenchantment generator. I think the play here, cause I can auto craft books from scratch. That's fine. Not a concern, but I think the play is going to be making the enchanter from ender IO. And that way I can automate some Enchanted books. Now, I don't really care how good they are. I mean, a bunch of gold, a bunch of lapis. I can just throw it over there next to the uh, experience obelisk, and then I won't have to worry about that. Uh, but I can just auto-craft a bunch of those. I can just figure out what's kind of the easiest versus how long it stays in the generator enchantment to make. It's probably going to be one of these XP boost ones, honestly. XP boost three. Well, actually, let's see. It probably shows it here. XP boost three. 
11 seconds? That sucks. Wait. Why are you... Auto smelt. Wait, did I... No, XP boost. Auto smelt. Okay, so I guess that's just the... Uh, JEI being a little bit weird. But fire protection is a pretty good one. If that needs blaze powder, though, that's kind of out of the question. Okay, so I will look into that. Uh, halitosis generator, I'm just going to throw them in manually. And then we'll just run it for 10 minutes at a time. Uh, I think everything else is pretty much set. All I need to do is bring the lava back from the, uh, the nether pump. And, uh, yeah, other than... Pretty much just those three things. We're almost ready here. It really seems so far away. It seems like such a difficult thing to do. And it is, to be fair, but I just can't believe we're about to do it. We're almost ready for the sort of grand finale here. Uh, the one thing that I need to make sure of first is does the potion generator leave the glass bottle behind? And I'm assuming that it does, but let's find out for sure. Okay, it does. So that means, oh, no, don't. I mean, you guys running is not that big of a deal. But <laughs> if that was the death generator, I would have felt pretty stupid. Okay, so it does leave the glass bottle behind, which means I don't need to make glass bottles. I just need some kind of, like, feedback loop for them so I can get rid of this crafter that I built here. Um, yeah, and so you can see the setup here. So I have milk filling buckets. And I have water filling bottles. And then there is a feedback from this. This extracts uh, buckets. The machines are smart enough not to extract. Like, they only extract things that you want to extract. Like, you don't even need a filter on here. And it just knows, don't extract this stuff. Just extract buckets. Um, feeds back into the fluid transposer. So there's just going to be a stack of 16 buckets always flowing through the system there. And similarly with the 64 uh, water bottles. So, uh that is just about done. The only thing that I don't have right now is sustainable milk. And that's something I need to set up an animal rancher for, which is apparently pretty fast. Um, so I'm not too worried about it. Each milk does last 24 seconds. And of course, it's going to last like 10 or 12 times as long um, because we're going to be pulsing it once every... I thought it was 10 ticks. Apparently, it's 12. So we're going to do 12 um, and see how that works out. And uh, the other thing that I don't have uh, technically sustainable right now is the enchanted books. So I brought over all the enchanted books. Apparently the resources fisher from uh, industrial foregoing is insanely fast. It has like luck of the sea 10 on it and you just get a ton of enchanting books. It's plenty fast for this. Um, but with this huge storage crate full of books, I don't imagine it's going to be really necessary in the future. This also, I'm told the overclock generator, like it does not use things up instantly if they have a high enough burn time but like when you can just use wood it's fine i'm thinking i may need to get a speed upgrade on this uh conduit so that it can extract the wood fast enough uh but we will see about that um also just making sure everything's good here i think we're we're about ready to go i have to set up this feedback and then also um i wanted to make a timer from RF tools because I was using these timers from Project Red, right? Like the one we had in the very beginning. Um, but they pulse for two ticks. I don't have one of these machine bases now, do I know? They pulse for two ticks and that's that's a waste, right? Because you're getting twice as many, twice as much use out of your, your generators that you don't really need. So uh, the RF tools timer is apparently much better. I don't know if this one needs power or what, um, but let's find out. Okay, it looks like it doesn't. That's good. So delay, so 12 ticks. Pause while redstone active. No, we don't have to worry about that. So this is pulsing every 12 ticks. I have these two levers set up here. So I set this up with a comparator. This is in subtractor mode. And so the reason I have it set up like that is so I can have a kill switch, right? So uh, this lever is coming in with uh, stuff. No, right now I don't know why this is not pulsing. Okay, I. Why is this not working? Because can the pulse like not be carried through this? I mean, that kind of sucks. I guess I don't really need a kill switch once I have it set up and going. And I also have a lever here to turn it always on just in case I need that. 
Maybe the, yeah, I guess the pulse isn't, uh, can't go through these, which kind of sucks, but eh, whatever. I'm not super worried about it. So I'll turn you off and I'm not quite ready to turn this on yet, but once I am, it's just going to be one redstone right here and then that will transfer to everything else and then we should be good to go. Okay. I think we're actually ready to go here. Um, all I have left to do is put this dragon's breath in. That's good to go. Everything else should be good to go. I surrounded it in glass because, uh, you know, one of these like spawns endermites and like, you know, maybe they can get out through there. I hope not. Um, and then like there's the stuff that you probably shouldn't just go near at all. So I figured it'd be better to encase them a little bit. But uh, yeah, so I, I double checked. All of these should be full of their stuff and their their systems and whatnot should be going well. And this actually, if you uh, put a redstone thing in the back, it uh, pauses. So all I need to do is flip this lever and these should all kick on and then we'll start getting the rainbow gen. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's working. That is huge. Look at the explosions too. Sending 25 million RF per tick. Let's have a look at the resonators. I set up two. So our grid power, I made a bunch of windmills, but it's very like sparse. It's very intermittent. Um, like right now we're up to like almost 700. Sometimes we're up to, we're, we're down below four. So I'm really hoping that it stays kind of where it needs to be so I can get a couple of these rainbow blocks. Uh, okay, there's one. And with the speed upgrades too. It should be good. It should be good. But there is our first couple of rainbow blocks. Holy shit. So I don't know if this is actually ticking on and off. I really don't care if it is. Like, it's totally fine. Like, it, well, we're getting the rainbow blocks, so I guess it doesn't matter. I mean, I guess it's working. The generator spectrum is complete. How about that? And these... Oh, I got the wither. <laughs> oh, no. Um, okay, so don't go that close. I'm really scared of the death one, but I guess... Those red particles are the only things I have to worry about. Um, but yeah, wow, that's uh, that's Rainbow Gen. Um, I do want to make some more mills just so I don't have to keep an eye on this grid power as much. But yeah, I, I guess that's it. I'm really glad those explosions don't uh, destroy anything. But I guess it would be stupid if they did. Um, yeah, and I, can, I guess I can just leave this running for as long as I want. Like, if that lasts 12 times, like, the halitosis is going to last two hours by my count because I'm pulsing it every 12 ticks, and it, they're supposed to take 10 minutes, right? Um, this milk, I'm going to keep an eye on for it to run out so when I get the uh, the animal rancher set up, but I think this is just going to work fine uh, for now to get our first few uh, rainbow things up and running because... Uh, yeah, I don't even, I don't even know like what we want to use these for right now. If anything, it's just a big milestone Got some more stone burnt. Uh, we can make a mechanical user, which is fine. I don't have any uses for that right now. New building wand. Don't really care for that. Uh, dragon egg mill is a pretty big one. Uh, well, that's going to solve the, that's going to solve the, uh, the, the GP problem for the most part. Right. So I'm going to make some of these things. Uh, what were these called? Redstone star. I think I'm auto crafting those. Yeah. One of those. And I just need, <laughs> I need another nether star, which they're in there. <laughs> so uh, I guess I could just turn this off. Now, if I turn that off, do these pause? They do pause. Okay. So that's good. And so I should be able to sneak in and grab one nether star from there. And turn you guys back on. And go ahead and make the dragon egg mill. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I think I see what happened there. I accidentally put it in the system and then it immediately, uh, got sucked out into this stuff here. Okay. i wait for you to abate a little bit. So this is a pretty huge thing. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly just happy that this works. I really didn't, 
not that I didn't think it would work because I knew it would work, but like, I don't know. It just seemed, it seemed so far away and now it's not. It's not fully autonomous, but it works. Oh, of course, I need the uh, the dragon egg itself. What do I get for that? A bunch of speed upgrades? Fine. So there's actually a new... Well, new to me at least. Well, it's probably I've probably played versions of the mod with this before, but I've never noticed. Um, if you have too much GP being produced by a single type of mill, then you get efficiency loss. So I thought that it was going to be like a proportion of the total GP you're making type of thing, but uh, it's actually not. It's just like if your windmills produce more than 512 GP, it's cut by 50%, which I don't know if that's like marginal or if it's total. So like if I have like 511, you know, then I'm making 511. But if I'm having, if I'm making 513, then that whole thing is cut in half, or if it's just that like extra on top of 512 that's cut in half, it would only really make sense for it to be the latter. So I'm assuming that it is, but who knows? It's kind of a bad mechanic in the first place. So uh, yeah, like the, the dragon egg mill, I think this is the mod pack author kind of saying like, ah, the efficiency stuff is stupid. You don't have to worry about it because the dragon egg mill is supposed to give 500 but then it's like if it gives more than 500, you get huge efficiency losses. So it's actually set up to give 10,000 and it ends up giving like 1,300 for your first one and then 500 for the other ones. So still definitely nothing to complain about. And now that I have this grid power, I'm going to put all these upgrades in here and then we can get a lot more rainbow blocks. But uh, yeah, that's uh, I think that's going to do it for this one. This is uh, really, really exciting. It'll be nice when I can actually store the power from this somewhere. Um, but for now, I guess we're just going to have to void it. And, uh, you know, I think until I see a use for more of these rainbow bricks, I'm going to just turn this off for now. Uh, because, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of useful stuff. You know, mechanical crafter, like, fine, we already have crafters. Quantum quarry might be a big one. The building wand, I'm not concerned about. We already got the dragon egg mill. This is a much later game thing. And like, yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're generally useful, but I mean, I, I don't think it was like super necessary. I did just want to get this done before moving on. But speaking of moving on, uh, that will be tomorrow. In tomorrow's episode, we are going to jump in to chapter 14 and into the abyss. Oh, it looks like all this stuff. Oh, all this stuff is for chapter 14 and you do need... You needed rainbow bricks for that. Okay, so that's cool. Um, so we'll make this stuff, and we'll get into chapter 14, uh, into Eden and the Wildwoods and Abyssalcraft. But for now, if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.